assalamu alaikum uh, class as you all know that in last class we have discussed about the techniques of lean production we have discussed about lean production lean production is a term used to refer all those techniques that are used by a business to eliminate waste from the business and we have discussed about kaizen jit and cell production the reason we are connecting here is next topic that we are going to study is methods of production so usually the mistake that students make is that when there is a question related to methods of production in exam so instead of just focusing on to these three things job production batch production and flow production students usually get confused and they also write lean production as a method of production they also write cell production as a method of production so usually they end up scoring no marks so to make this thing very clear we have got so far three methods of production for oolabal business first of all we have job production what is job production job production is where a single product is made at a time where a single product is made at a time that means at a time we are going to deal one customer and since we are dealing one customer at a time so level of customization would be very high we have already studied we have two types of goods either we are offering standardized products or we are offering customized products if you talk about customized products these are those goods that are let's say made to order or are satisfying the requirements of an individual customer level of specification customer requirement of specification is very high each and every thing every feature in a product is added according to the customer's requirement in a customized good so in job production we have in job production we usually produce customized goods which can also be referred to as personalized or specialized goods now to coming to the advantages of the job production for a business uh, it's a suitable method of production for customized products for a business that is offering customized goods or services for them job production is the most suitable method reason is when you are asking customers what their requirements are and you are trying to deliver as per their expectation exact requirements so this this is an advantage for a business it would enable a business to charge high prices from a customer and customer would be willing to pay high prices because exact requirements of the customers are being met by a business similarly if uh, you are offering customized product and you are fulfilling each and every requirement of a customer this would lead to greater customer satisfaction and if customers are satisfied with you this might make them loyal to your business this will increase the loyalty status and they would even be generating positive word of mouth if you talk about couple of examples you might have seen there are many businesses that are offering bridal dresses designer bridal dresses if you talk about customer satisfaction rate about those designers that is very high and those customers would again and again when they would be needing those type of fancy dresses for weddings would prefer the same designer because of the loyalty status that have been developed because of customized products being offered according to the customers requirement third thing is it offers variety of jobs for workers what do we mean by variety of jobs for workers if you talk about customized products so there are multiple tasks that needs to be performed by a worker whereas in standardized goods you will notice high level of specialization is followed and a worker is sitting is continuously sitting on a particular workbench they are not supposed to move here and there a worker would throughout be doing a same task let's say for a couple of years they have been if they are sitting on a stitching machine they'll continuously be stitching the clothes if someone is there on the uh, let's say dyeing part is someone is there on the dyeing part so he would be continuously dyeing the piece of cloth so level of specialization is very high in standardized goods whereas if you talk about customization you will notice that workers will be having variety of jobs a same worker would let's say might cut a piece of cloth then he might go for a stitching so since there are variety of jobs for workers so the element of boredom that is created in the specialization that we have studied earlier in chapter 1 specialization creates or brings boredom among the workers as a result efficiency falls down the absence of boredom would be there because variety of jobs are being performed by a worker 
Now, talking about the drawbacks, what are the drawbacks of job for following job production to a business? If you talk about job production, so it's a highly labor intensive business. In job production, you will notice that whether it's uh, you talk about tailors, whether you talk about designers, it's a labor intensive business. What is a labor intensive business? We have already studied earlier. We have two types of businesses. One is labor intensive, another one is capital intensive. In labor intensive businesses, the labor to capital ratio is high. That means more amount of labors are being used for the production of goods as compared to capital, as compared to machines. Very few machines are being used by a business. So if it's a labor intensive business, so there are chances of mistakes. Workers might make mistakes. If workers are making mistakes, this could be very expensive for the business. It's a labor intensive business. Chances of mistakes are there for material can be wasted. This leads to inefficiency to a business. And it's since it's a labor intensive business and the workers that are used is highly skilled. Often highly skilled workers are used by a business. So again, this is going to be very, very costly for the business if you are hiring skilled workers and have got experience as well, prior experience in that case, in order to attract and retain those workers, you have to offer them high wages, market competitive wages. As a result, this would increase the labor cost for the business and ultimately overall cost or average cost of a business would also be increasing if output is not increasing with the same proportion. This would make business less competitive if the market is competitive. Whereas usually in the case of job production, competition or intense competition is not that much big issue because product is very, very differentiated by different brands. Mistakes can be expensive as products are made to order. Yes, products are tailored, one of services are being provided, it's made to order or built to order goods. A customer would come in, would deliver the order and would expect the goods to be delivered on time with the exact requirements. However, if a mistake has been done by a business, that is going to be very expensive because no other customer would be willing to purchase that good. Since it's a customized good, every customer has his or her own specification requirement. So why would any other customer, why would any other customer be willing to accept a good which has already been rejected by any other customer by the prior customer so mis mistakes are going to be very expensive a business might have to dump or scratch the entire product the value has been added the material cost the labor cost has already been incurred but because of a slight mistake you might have to dump the entire product and have to give compensation to the workers this would take time this would waste money as well for the business as a result business is going to be inefficient we can, we can say that image would be destroyed customers would not be satisfied that order is not completed on time and this would also increase the cost image issue brand image spoiled negative word of mouth and cost increase for the business because of compensation being offered to the customers and finally material is especially purchased since it's a customized product a business that is offering high level of customization would never know what type of order a customer would come, what type of requirements would a customer be seeking. So in that situation, businesses are unable to purchase different materials in large quantities. So if they are unable to purchase material in bulk quantities or in large quantities, they cannot get the benefit of economies of scale, that is purchasing economy. I am referring to purchasing economy. What is economy of scale? We have already studied earlier economies of scale are the factors that lead to a reduction in average cost of a business as it grow in size. As a business expands, its output increases. As the output increases, average cost would start falling up to a certain level, up to that optimum level. If you can recall or remember that graph that I have shared with you guys earlier, up to an optimum output level, you will notice the average cost is falling and after that, average cost would start increasing. So the point is, these businesses that are offering customized product and having job production cannot be benefited from economies of scale. As a result, their average cost is likely to be high. But still that can be overcome. Why? Because product is highly differentiated. Competition is not a very much issue for them. So they can transfer this high cost burden onto the customers by charging 
high prices. Then the job production of next we have batch production. It's quite obvious with the name that goods are being produced in a batch or in batches. Now what is batch production? We have discussed that in job production, single product were made at a time. In job, in batch production, in batch production, quantity of one good would be made, and then quantity of another item would be produced. Initially, we are going to let's say produce the quantity of one good. Let's say uh, a firm is producing uh, Pepsi is producing Pepsi, Seven Up, Mountain Dew, X Y Z product. So initially they are going to complete a batch although Pepsi has got a very large sales so they are more likely to be following the flow production but still to put it in, ex in an example we can take this example initially the batch of Pepsi would be completed once the batch of Pepsi is completed then they would jump on to 7up then they will jump on to Mirinda then they will jump on to Mountain Dew and other products that are being offered by Pepsi Corporation PepsiCo so that's batch production where a batch of single product is made and then a quantity of another product is made. Now what could be the possible, possible advantages of batch production to a business? It's a flexible way of working. What do we mean by flexibility? Flexibility means businesses are quite responsive to the changes in the, or change, changes in the demand from customers. Let's say if there is an increasing demand for product X, let's say for Pepsi. So firm would switch the production line and would increase the production of Pepsi. And similarly, if they notice that the demand for Pepsi is going down and demand for white drinks, let's say Seven Up is going up, they would switch the production line and would increase the production of Seven Up. So the, by flexibility, we mean that firms are highly responsive to the changes in customers' demand. Number one. So how would we analyze this point? Flexible way of working, that means firms are highly responsive. So this could keep the customers loyal to a business. Customers would feel that, would notice that when we are demanding product X, that is being offered by a business. Product Y, that is being offered by a business. Product Z, that is also being offered by a business. As per the changes in demand, everything is available by a brand. Under one umbrella, everything is available by a brand. So this would increase the loyalty status for a business that is following batch production. Secondly, we have variety of tasks for workers. It still gives some variety to the workers job. Although some level of specialization, comparatively greater level of specialization would be followed if you talk about job production. Uh, if, you, uh, if you compare it with job production, you will notice level of specialization would be higher. But still it would be giving variety of tasks for workers variety of jobs would be there for work in workers JD how product X is being manufactured and then machines being reset for the production of Y then production of Z we are producing different goods when the machines are being reset production is getting changed we are going to produce another good this will give variety to the workers again the element of boredom that existed in a typical concept of a specialization will be reduced as a result, efficiency will be maintained because there is no boredom, workers are motivated so, or you can say the very less chances for boredom. So workers are motivated to work harder, less chances of mistakes as well for a business. Production will not be affected to a great extent if machinery breaks down. Obviously, we are not relying on a single product. We are manufacturing product X, product Y, product Z. We are manufacturing multiple products. If let's say machinery breaks down, for product X, fine, we can switch our plant production line for the production of good Y or production of good Z. We can still continue producing goods. If you talk about a typical concept of a specialization that we are going to discuss in flow production, if a machinery is going to break down, entire production would be stopped or halted. No production would take place. And this would be a greatest inefficiency for the business where machines are available, where workers are available, where material is available. Everything is, we are, we, every, we have paid for each and everything. We are, we have also paid rent in advance. We have paid for every expenditure, for everything. But no production is taking place in case of flow production. However, in case of batch production, if there is any breakdown of a machinery, we can switch our production line to the, for the production of other goods. This would, this would have a little impact on the efficiency as it would take time to switch our production line or machines to reset our machines for the production of other goods. But still, we can cover it up or cope up with the technological failure or machinery breakdown. 
And if you talk about the drawbacks, we have semi-finished or finished goods inventory that would be stored. Obviously, if you talk about batch production, so demand in batch production is somewhat predictable. I know when the demand for my product X, let's say Pepsi would be high, when the demand for 7up would be high, when the demand for my product Z or let's say Mirinda would be high. The demand is somewhat predictable. So what firms do? They manufacture the goods in batches and they store or keep that uh, batches in their inventory. They are going to maintain semi-finished goods inventory and finished goods inventory. Now what is finished goods inventory? Where the raw material is fully transformed into a final product, into a finished good and that is available in our warehouses as the order would come, we are going to deliver it to the retailers or wholesalers, whatever. Now what is semi-finished? Semi-finished goods are those goods that are partially processed. Raw materials being used, labor cost being applied, but those goods are not fully processed. What we have done, we have partially processed the goods because we have no idea ki whether the demand would be high for product X, Y or Z. Partial processing would enable us to respond, to respond quickly to the changes in demand. Let's say partial processing has been done. Now the formula that I have already prepared can be used for the production of good X for the production of good Y and for the production of good Z. Assuming, uh, let's take an example of paint companies that are producing paints, Nelson, Berger, what they usually do? They have a typical formula that they partially process. After having a semi-finished goods inventory or partial processing, what they do if they get an order for, let's say a particular color, white color, they would add that color in the chemical. So chemical that is used for making color is more or less same the concentration might vary, the colors would be added later on on the customer demand. So that's why we need to hold semi-finished goods inventory as well. Since we are holding inventory, large warehouse would be needed and there would be high storage cost. And one more thing, if inventory is being stored by a business, there is always a chance of get inventory getting damaged. Let's say fire could take place, any other incident could take place, any accident could take place. This might damage the entire inventory. As a result, cost would be incurred, would be wasted. Second thing, if you are holding inventory, don't you think you have processed goods, either semi-finished or finished goods inventory, you have processed goods, you have applied labor cost, material cost, all of the costs have been applied onto those goods. But those goods are still not sold, they are in the warehouses. Large sum of cash is stuck. Large sum of cash is stuck in the form of inventory and that cash for sure has an opportunity cost. We could have used that cash for paying our partial loans, for paying utility bills, for paying wages or any other expense. We could have used that cash to pay for the advertisements. We could have used that cash for the promotions that would have lead to increased sales. So there is always an opportunity cash, if a opportunity cost of cash if it is stuck in form of inventory. Finally, machines have to be reset. Yes, as we discussed earlier, it's a flexible way of working. Machines can be reset easily from the production of good X to Y, Y to Z and so on. Since machines are going to be reset once you have completed the batch of one product and then moving to the batch for the production of batch of another product, so it would take time to reset the machine. Meanwhile, output will be stop no production would take place where the workers are being paid everything let's say you are not paying the workers according to the preset you are paying your workers according to the time rate system that means per hour early wages are being given to the workers no work is done machines are getting reset but still we have to pay to our workers again that would lead to inefficiency for a business okay next we have flow production what is flow production flow production is more like a concept of a specialization where goods are being produced in large quantities throughout where continuous production of goods would take place throughout non-stop we can even say 24 7 production workers are coming working in three shifts of eight hours there would be three shifts of eight hours and 24 7 production would take place so that is flow production where the goods are being produced in a continuous flow or process throughout non-stop. Okay, if you talk about flow production, so flow production is the most suitable method of production for standardized products. Now what is standardized products? Those goods that are being manufactured to satisfy the needs and wants 
of the entire market not just one customer or one consumer we are going to add all those features that are needed by the customers but not according to the requirement of single customer as with the case of customized product here the target was a single customer here the target is entire market in case of standardized goods my target is the entire market what customers are demanding let's say let's take a couple of examples as over here we discussed about bridal dresses tailors the services being offered by beauty salons are the examples of customized goods or services in standardized goods soap soap we have beauty soap we have antibacterial soap we have medicated soap if you talk about beauty soap we have lax dove capri and so on we have multiple soaps that are available for people and these are all examples of standardized goods we have detergents ariel we have surf excel we have bonus we have express these are all examples of standardized goods these are already available there in the market if you need to purchase it as per your preference you can purchase if not surf excel then ariel if not ariel then bonus anything that you need to purchase for your convenience for the satisfaction of your need or want you can purchase the good is already available there in the market okay so the point is standardized goods produced in large quantities so what is the benefit if the goods are being produced in large quantities it's a large scale production large scale production is taking place goods are being produced in large quantities so there are chances that good business would achieve economies of scale as a result their average cost would be low and the profitability might be higher capital intensive production methods are being used yes since goods are standardized goods are being produced in a continuous flow in large quantities very with very very little variation let's say variation in the colors of soap from pink to white white to purple if you take an example of lax so capital intensive production methods are being used by businesses now what is capital intensive production method capital intensive production method means where the capital to labor ratio is high that means high amount of machines are being used by a business as compared to labor very few workers are needed to operate those machines whereas entire production is taking place through machines if you talk about automobile industry these are highly highly capital intensive business they are working on automation cars are being assembled by mach by robots or machines those machines or robots are being controlled by a computer how through preset programs so that is pure example or a good example of capital intensive production method since capital intensive production methods are used few labors are being used there are few chances of mistakes since machines are producing goods so goods will be let's say have a uniform standard uniform quality customers will not be coming up with complaints that this has got less weight or the design is not appropriate since goods are being produced with the help of machines so quality would be maintained throughout there would be no complaints in the product less chances of faulty goods being produced and delivered to the customers economies of scale can be achieved yes large scale production goods are being produced in large quantities so businesses are likely to achieve economies of scale economies of scale achieved by a business means reduced or falling average cost this would again make a business more competitive since its flow production since standardized goods are being produced goods are very identical similar to the goods being offered by other brands here we try to differentiate our product over here our strategy would be to advertise and differentiate our product and at the same time we would also try to cut down our cost so that we can compete on both the bases we can have a price competition and a non price competition and so to engage in price competition you should try your level best to achieve economies of scale as a result average cost would be low and you can pass on this benefit to the customers by charging low prices this would increase your custo uh, customer base this would increase their sales and ultimately market share would also be increased by a business and this would also offer business dominance in the industry if market share is highest or at peak now the drawbacks of flow production obviously a uh, high level of specialization is used in flow production workers are continuously sitting on a particular workbench and doing the same task throughout for many years or for many months so this would create boredom among the workers workers will get bored by continuously doing the same job they will feel monotonous this would lead to boredom this would take away the interest of the workers from the work 
when they are going to lose interest from the work there would be more chances of mistakes or errors taking place material would could be waste faulty goods might be sold to the customers there could be complaint from the customers brand image might be spoiled if the goods are faulty and sold to the customers high capital cost obviously it's a capital intensive production business capital intensive business goods are being produced with the use of machines so the setup cost or the cost of capital is going to be very high installation cost the initial cost initial capital that would be needed to set up or to even to upgrade your machines is going to be very high as a result it might take time for a business to achieve break even it would take couple of years or months depending upon the investment that has been made by a business and next we are significant storage space needed yes demand is predictable or i must say highly predictable as compared to batch production we know how many units of let's say soap detergents or packs of detergents how many packs of soap would be needed by customers in the first quarter of the year second quarter third quarter demand is somewhat predictable from the past data that is available to me so i will try to produce goods in larger quantities and would try to store those goods in my warehouses as a result significant a large storage space would be needed by business again that would have multiple cost to the business storage space needed number 1 this would increase cost as you have to pay rent for the warehouse inventory is let's say held by a business so cash is stuck there is an opportunity cost of that cash apart from that there is always a chance of accident taking place there is always a chance of inventory getting damaged in the business because of any sort of accident so this all will lead to increase in cost for the business finally if machinery breaks down so production would be stopped yes since it's uh, we are producing standardized goods following flow production continuously goods are being produced on a production line so if there is any breakdown in the machinery or any worker is absent this would stop or halt the entire production and no goods will be produced at all this would again lead to inefficiency because workers are being paid rent has already been paid all other expenses are being paid for but no production is taking place so to sum it up i would just say we have got three production methods job production where a single product is made at a time and then another product is made we have batch production where goods are being produced in batches a quantity of one good is produced and then production line is switched to another good for the production another good and third one is flow production where goods are produced in continuous process this is sometimes also referred to as mass production flow production also referred to as mass production mass mass production means huge large level of production let's say large scale of production so these are the advantages and disadvantages just discussed by us for the following matters of production along with the analytical statements possible analytical statements that i could have give for these points and i'm sure you guys would be taking your own notes and would try to analyze these points as you already know how to analyze a point how to analyze an advantage or disadvantage i will be waiting for your queries if there are any queries you can ask me you can comment you can contact through whatsapp or any other medium i will be there i will be there to answer your queries thank you so much